always. Naduk climbs up the tree to the highest branches and goes about collecting leaves. It is not long before lunch is served for Naduk and her family. Government has tried many approaches to lift Uganda's poorest region out of poverty in vain. Signposts erected in the middle of nowhere, some pointing to projects that do not exist. Agromax was paid 1.1 billion shillings to implement 49 projects, but to date, nothing has been done on ground. Put together the autogenous reports, I handed over to police to investigate. Up to now, there's nothing. More than 1 billion shillings was released for establishment of that settlement based initiative. It has gone missing up to today. The only legacy of, uh, of, of support to Karamoja are signposts. I think there are more signposts than beneficiaries. This is Naduk Masi. Naduk is on her way to collect lunch for her family. But this is not the usual lunch. She forages around the village to this tree. Naduk climbs up the tree to the highest branches and goes about collecting leaves. Her experience comes out as she dodges thorns to pick just the green leaves. Naduk now moves back to her hut, locally known as a manyata, and starts boiling what will be lunch for today. Naduk's family lunch preparations are quick. There is no salt or other spices to add to these leaves, just the water they boil in, and it is not long before lunch is served for Naduk and her family. Due to the biting drought in Karamoja this time of the year, Naduk and many other women like her in this village in Napak district do not have any food reserves and they have resorted to gathering fruits and seeds and leaves of any tree that will not kill them. Anything that is not poisonous will work as food right now, as Lomongin Maria, one of the other residents of Lokodumo, illustrates. Yeah, they get the leaves of those who are this, this kind of tree, they, they boil and then they eat as the green vegetables. Lomongin doubles as the chairperson of the Lokodumo Sea Women's Group Sako which they registered to access Emioga funds. Emioga is a sako based government poverty eradication program. Lomongin, however, says to date they have never received any money. When the locals learn that we are here asking about Emioga, more of them gather. They say it was unfair for government to have them save a percentage of the money because, in fact, they do not have this money. Yeah. But Emioga is not the only development program that government has implemented in Karamoja. Government has tried many approaches to lift Uganda's poorest region out of poverty in vain. Littered all over Karamoja are signposts of various programs by the office of the Prime Minister, signposts erected in the middle of nowhere, some pointing to projects that do not exist. This signpost in Napak says there is meant to be a youth savings bank. All I see for miles all the way to the horizon is a bush. There is no bank anywhere in sight. One such project by government was the Northern Uganda Social Action Fund 3, also referred to as NUSAF 3. Launched in 2016 by President Yoweri Museveni, this World Bank funded project was meant to improve access for beneficiary households and communities in Northern Uganda 
to income earning opportunities and improve basic socio-economic services with Karamoja as one of the benefiting regions. On 6th June 2022, Brigadier General Henry Isoke, the head of the State House Anti-Corruption Unit, in a letter we have seen and verified, wrote to the RDC Moroto calling for investigation into what he termed as gross abuse in the management of NUSAF 3 funds. We went to the RDC Wapua George William to ask how far with this investigation. One of the instructions we have, which is a result of the presidential directive, is zero tolerance to corruption. But the investigating machinery is the police, not the RDC. I have had, I think, a disappointing experience with police. Wapua faults the Uganda police for frustrating his efforts to investigate the mismanagement of these funds. When I came here, we found the, 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 the resource office had combined the incidences which would constitute evidence. I put together the Water General's reports. I handed over to police to investigate. Up to now, there's nothing. He, however, reveals that there is indeed evidence of mismanagement that he has seen. I came here, looked through the Water General's reports. We found over 420 million shillings was used between 19, 20, 20, 20, 2019 2020, and it was not accounted for. It is captured by a park, it is supposed to be recovered. It has never been recovered. The accounting officer have never followed it up. Part of NUSAF 3 was the construction of a settlement community based development initiative model of farming in Nabila Tuk. This was aimed at promoting food security and reducing poverty levels. This model, borrowed from Israel, would have communities jointly produce crops and dairy to maximize output in an extensive scale. This is, however, all that there is to show for billions of Uganda shillings dispersed under NUSAF 3 to an Israeli-based contractor, Agromax, to implement this project. A project comes for the community, fails. Where does the money go? That's a question mark. Who has eaten that money? Now you have seen the material, packed. the pipe been for irrigation. Two years after the end of NUSAF 3, the site looks abandoned, with a few equipment dumped here and there. We have left soldiers there with the hope that they will come back and continue their work. Lokol Paul, the LC5 chairperson of Nabila Tuk district, says this was a cost project. The failure in Nabila Tuk of, the, of NUSAF 3, if we said it has performed poorly, is because it was inked on the, that model of a settlement-based initiative. More than 1 billion shillings was released for establishment of that settlement-based initiative. It has gone missing up to today. We are still asking the leaders of Agromax where the money is. Agromax was paid 1.1 billion shillings to implement 49 projects. Some of the projects include beekeeping, dairy farming, vegetable farming and roadworks, among others, at Koske sub-county. Some of the projects like fencing of Koske sub-county headquarters at 41 million shillings were accounted for by Agromax, but to date, nothing has been done on ground. The State Minister for Karamoja Affairs, Agnes Nandutu, while on a visit to Nabila Tuk in August 2022, issued an ultimatum of one week to Agromax to commence works, ordering police to arrest the owners of the company if works did not commence. <laughs> Seven months have passed now, and still, nothing. Lokol says they are now stranded since NUSAF 3 has closed, with all project activities ending in 2021. We attempted to arrest Ronnie because we thought he was, he, was, he was defrauding us. Together with the former RDC, Mr. Dong, and uh, we, after later, I think uh, Mr. Dong told me he had received calls from OPM. He didn't disclose the people who called him that we are, we are working on that issue. Up to now, the money is still out. The project was meant to employ over 1,200 community members involved in vegetable growing, apiary, dairy farming, and commercial crop production using labor-intensive public works 
as well as mechanized farming with a solar-powered irrigation system for all-season production. But now, with no jobs for his people, Lokol has resorted to giving the land to local women groups to use for agriculture. So when the member parliament engaged women, and I think that uh, Ronnie, the, the Israelite that I told you, is in charge of this company, called uh, and asked her to stop the exercise because that the land is theirs. And I want to say we are going to use that land because we think we still think it is community land. Amongst all the allegations of mismanagement and corruption in the past government poverty eradication programs, leaders in Karamoja now worry for the new parish development model. At my sub county, it has not started. We don't know when will it start, but we are hearing that the money is there and we have not seen the money being used. We had of something like 13 million, 13 million for parish model. But when you look at 13 million, now, then you look at really the parish, the number of people who are there in the parish, 13 million. Now, which project will the 13 million run? Will this anger with a lot of sunshine? And now we are having serve four coming. Now, the same people who messed up Lusaf 1 are going to be the same focal persons for Lusaf 4. Agaba Malon, the executive director of the Anti-Corruption Coalition Uganda, says it has become the norm for government officials seated somewhere in Kampala to mishandle projects. The only legacy of, uh, of, of support to Karamoja are signposts. You, you see, there, I think there are more signposts than beneficiaries. This project, that project, that project. There are so many on the road, but there is nothing in terms of substance for the people. And we have, we have been doing some work and monitoring over time. And even the scandals have there have been quite a number. You talk about in Nisaf, scandal in Nisaf 2 and Nisaf 1. Yeah, you talk about scandals of the PRDP, Peace Recovery and Development Program, and how much money was embezzled for the beneficiaries. You talk about this uh, iron sheets scandal that came out recently and the, and the good scandal and there have been quite a number of scandals that have been going on there so in a way it has become kind of a, a cash cow for for the corrupt malo now says government needs to deal with the problems of corruption accountability and transparency in the region before trying to lift the region out of poverty again using another program i think there are some gaps that we need to fix and you need to know that pdm comes at uh, the background of having other programs similar to that. Uh, in Tandekwa, you have had Mioga, youth, youth livelihood, you have had the, the women, money, and ETC. And most of those programs, the new serfs and what, they have been uh, affected by high levels of corruption. And the context hasn't changed. If anything, the context, I think, probably has worsened. We go to the ground and we don't get any project, but we get the signpost. That's already corruption, because there is nothing in the ground. That's, that's a part of accountability for them to say that there was a project. But now it is really shameful when you put a signpost where there is no project going on. Some government leaders in Karamoja, however, maintain that government projects have been implemented flawlessly. I want to say that uh, I think we are on the right track. What we have done as our offices, we are writing to Agruma, Agrumax, they come and then we, we discuss that issue. The government programs in Karamoja have been well taken up by those who understand it because there's a lot of communication towards that. Those who understand it are using it well. We have success stories of um, yoga, we have success stories of uh, 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 SAGE. But while politicians exchange words in debate over various government programs that have been mishandled in Paramoja, the poverty continues to bite and the people at the bottom of the chain like Naduk continue to either starve or, on a good day, find some leaves to eat as they wait for yet again another government program that could get them out of poverty or, in a few years, become just another signpost in Karamoja.
Peace.